Right. For this tutorial, we're going to uh, use Adobe Illustrator to make, uh, to basically trace card suits. Um, we're going to go with this large size, 1920 by 1080. Uh, I like to get rid of the checkerboard in the back, so I go Control Shift D. And now I need to go to Google and do a search for card suits. And let's bring them into, yeah, we'll click on this one, copy image, and then we'll go over here and we'll paste it. So there we go. Now let's open the layers. Right here is the layers um, panel, and I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to lock this one by clicking right here, just so I can't accidentally grab this and move it. Uh, I also want to... Let's see, how do I do, I want the opacity to be like 50%. So I'm going to type 50. Nope, that didn't do it. Um, gosh, I'm not sure if I know what properties. Is that how I do it? Let's see. Man, I don't think I know how to change the opacity of the layer. Not offhand anyways. Uh, but I can work around it. I'll just unlock this and click on the image itself and do 50% opacity. I'll do that until I later find out how to uh, edit the opacity of the layer. But anyways, let me lock that layer again. And now we've got a layer above it because I clicked down here. And this is the layer I'm going to use to trace these. I'm going to hit Z and zoom in on this and I hold shift while I move it into position and now we're going to use the pen tool which uh, I have to admit I used to hate the pen tool I didn't understand it it made me mad and um, I'm here to try to help you not experience the same kind of frustration I did uh, the pen tool has some weird behaviors if you don't know how to uh, manipulate it so let me control z control z control z first thing you need to know is click here and then let go. That creates an anchor point. Uh, and from there, we can go out to about, let's go out to about right here. And then this time we're going to click and pull. And you can see what that does. And if you play with it, if you pull really long, it's like the magnitude of that handle gets longer. And that causes the curve, uh, the majority of the curve to be out at the end. And if you bring it in short, then the majority of the curve is right here by where we've anchored. So to get the smooth curve, it turns out that you kind of want that handle to be about halfway. And it, it also pays that I chose this spot right here because it's kind of the inflection point. It's the moment that this curve turns back the other direction. So I'm going to go out to about here now, and I'm going to click and drag. I'm not going to let go until I drag this into a nice curve that fits that. And now I'm going to go, I could probably get away with going all the way to here and just pull until that matches the curve. It looks like I went a little too far. I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'll stop halfway because that proved to be a little too much for the curve. So I'll pull and match the curve and just kind of finesse it until it's in the right place. Then I'm going to go here and click and pull and maneuver there. Okay, now at this point, uh, I would lose my mind in the past about how this is kind of noodling around and there's no way to get it to really behave but the trick is to click the anchor and that gives you like it breaks the um the behavior i guess i don't know how to explain it it just breaks that uh and then click here and just drag and you can get it to match that curvature okay now once again we're gonna have that problem of this noodling around unless we click the anchor and now notice when we get directly below this point, it gives us kind of a guide, that magenta guide. I'm going to click that and then I'm going to go straight up to here and click again. And now I've got um, 
half of this thing done. So I'm going to hit V on the keyboard. So it gives me the direct selection tool. I'm going to hit control C, control shift V. What that does is it pastes a copy of that in exactly the same position. I'm going to hit control Z till it comes back. Uh, what I want to do is mirror this thing. And there's a tool in here somewhere. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, maybe it's under the rotate. Yeah, reflect. So uh, I'm going to click that and then double click it so it opens up this. Oh, and by the way, I could have just, uh, instead of dragging out a copy, I could have hit copy here. But anyways, I'm going to have it flip along the vertical. And I'll just say OK. And yeah, it looks like it already did it. I guess it did it when I first clicked it. I wasn't watching. But anyways, um, if you hold it until the guides kind of confirm that you're in the right position, let go. There you go. Now let's select both of them. And um, I'm going to use this tool right here. It's the Shape Builder tool. And it's kind of fun to use because whenever you mouse over regions, it turns it speckled. And if you draw a line sort of connecting them, it will just combine them. So I kind of like using that tool. Now, while this is selected, up here is the color that we can choose. And I want red. No, black. Yeah, this is spade. So, and I don't want any stroke. That's what this is showing. If I wanted a stroke, I could, you know, go like that. And then we could increase the size. But I don't want that. So I'll just go back to slash. No stroke. Oh, I guess I have to select it first. Uh, maybe I got to click a different stroke what do i got to do here let me select it there okay now it's definitely selected thank you okay so now let's go to the next one the heart and each one of these shapes has its own little challenges some are easier than others but uh, by the time you get done drawing these uh, you should be pretty happy with your skills uh, i think this time i'm going to preemptively pick red Okay, so now I'm going to use the pen tool. Remember the trick at first is to click once and let go and then move out here and click and drag. Uh, that's not what I expected. I'm not getting the results that I want. I must have the wrong tool. Yeah, this is the wrong tool. Let's get this pen tool. Um, curvature tool is what I was using. It's the pen tool. Okay, so click once and it's square if you notice the other one was round. But anyways, uh, click here, drag, and get it to match that curvature as closely as possible. And now I'll go out to about here. Um, the further you can go, the better. But uh, really one of the pieces of advice that I'm, I've heard and I, I try to live by is the fewer points that you can build your shape with, the better. But um, you, you can only do so much. Sometimes, you, it, you know, sometimes I find myself going too far and not being able to accomplish um, the look that I want. So uh, typically I'll just hit Control Z and back up. All right, so now I'm going to hit Enter and it breaks us out of that. And now I'll use this tool to um, actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit Reflect. And I'll say copy there. So I'm going to hit uh, V and drag it over. And it'll confirm that I'm in the right position when I get there. Boom. OK, select them. And this time, let's use the Pathfinder Union. If you like using the Shape Builder better, go ahead. But there you go. Um, and by the way, if you later decide that, you know, I've done this before where the curves didn't quite, you know, they were kind of uh had sharp corners or something you can use this tool the sub uh direct selection tool to select those points and you can even arrow key or drag until you know sometimes you can actually make things worse but sometimes you can make them better so you might want to pull this handle um I don't know if that's going to make it better, but I'm just saying if you happen to feel like there's an area where things didn't turn out right, 
Yeah, maybe I could do that there. And that there. Maybe. Of course, this is reflected, so I'd have the same problem over here. I might just adjust this a little bit like so. Don't know if it's better or worse. Probably not better. And it sure is jumpy. I guess I'd want to hit Z and zoom in. And then pull up on this handle. Um, you can end up spending an awful lot of time sometimes dinking around with this, but, but sometimes it gives you good results. And I think it's worth doing that sort of thing at least a few times just to get an idea of how you can adjust things and fix things and smoothen things out. And it all depends on how important the project is for you. So uh, continue on, do the clubs and diamonds, and you'll have a, a pretty good grasp on how this tool works. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.